Together we can make it on the road to Jannah. You and me hand in hand on the road to Jannah. Together we can make it on the road to Jannah. You and me hand in hand on the road to Jannah. All my life I've had this dream where I can live in peace knowing you and me are on the road. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to a new episode of our program Ila al-Jannati Zumara Together to Paradise Today we're talking about something That will definitely inshallah help us Get to Paradise And that will help us Become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya And also in the akhirah We're talking about unity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as one nation we are united. Even though we come from different tribes, we come from different nations, we have different skin colors, we are one ummah. The ummah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. But the reality is that we see the ummah, Muslim ummah divided today. And I'm not only talking about Muslim countries, I'm talking about Muslim communities in the West. Communities who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed by being so diverse and having Muslims from all over the world. We are not following the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we are being divided within ourselves. See, my dear brothers and sisters, as Muslims, we are already a minority in Western countries, but we make ourselves even a smaller and a smaller and a smaller minority by dividing within ourselves, by not uniting with each other. For example, you have the Arab masjid, in your typical big city, you have your Arab masjid, you have your Desi masjid, you have your Somali masjid, you have your Bosnian masjid, you have your African American masjid. But do we really have a Muslim masjid? A masjid that is based on the principles of Islam. That is not based on you know, one culture group versus the other. That is based on La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. See, if as an older generation, our dear fathers and mothers, as a group, did not fulfill this obligation of becoming united, me and you, my dear brothers and sisters, cannot fall into this trap. We cannot fall into this trap of nationalism, of tribalism, of any type of ism except what is called Islamism. Okay? We are Muslims. See, some of the earlier Muslims used to say something amazing. They used to say, we are a people who Allah gave greatness to through Islam. So if we seek greatness in anything else other than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us the weakest of nations. SubhanAllah. And this is what we see in the Muslim world today. Whether it's on Muslim communities, whether it is on different parts of the Muslim ummah, we see our Muslim ummah disunited. People, you know, being proud of themselves just because they're from this country or from that country. Or, you know, thinking that they are better than other people just because they're from this country or that country. Or not allowing their children to get married because I'm from this country and this guy or this brother is from this country and my daughter is not going to get married to this people or that people even though they are good practicing Muslims. These issues that we're facing, my dear brothers and sisters, are not what Islam teaches us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of you, all of you, and do not divide amongst yourselves. We are dividing, my dear brothers and sisters. We're not uniting on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. See, in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we have created you in tribes and nations لتعارفوا, so that you may get, get to know each other. We have changed that ayah into لتعارفوا, which means to fight one another. Instead of لتعارفوا, we've made it لتعارفوا, to fight within each other. See, um, I've sat in many community meetings, you know, the thing is like we always call ourselves the Muslim community, but we're not really being a community. We're dividing amongst ourselves. I sat at different 
meetings within different Muslim communities all over the United States, you know, in order to try to help resolve problems. At every single place that I went to, I saw the same exact problems. The same exact problems. And I was talking one day to a group, you know, and, and they asked me that question. They're like, why do we have the same exact problem in every single part of the country? Why do we have, you know, whether it's in, uh, you know, this state or that state or this state or that state, we have the same problem, which is Muslims dividing amongst themselves based on race, based on things that are absolutely contradictory to Islam. And I told them, brothers and sisters, they may be different communities, but it is the same shaitan. It is the same shaitan. That is the issue that we're facing with you, brothers and sisters. It's the same shaitan. Shaitan is dividing us. And we as Muslim youth cannot fall into this trap. And the way that we don't fall into this trap is to understand that it doesn't matter where I'm originally from, or where, where, where you're originally from, because at the end of the day, we are originally from one father and one mother, Adam and Eve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us all from the same material. Okay? And if the previous generation as a whole, of course, you know, we have alhamdulillah, our, some of our fathers and mothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, who are holding on to Islam and making Islam their top priority, much more than our generation is. But we can safely say that as a generality, the previous generation is not holding on to this concept. They are saying, I'm from such and such country, before they're saying, I'm a Muslim. But me and you, my dear brothers and sisters, we are Muslims first. We are Muslims first. There's nothing wrong with being proud of being from a certain area of the world. As long as that does not contradict the concept of Islam. Meaning that just because you're from such and such country originally, or you are from such and such country, you don't think that you are better than someone else who's from a different part of the world. See, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a very important subject. We're talking here about paradise. Okay, we're talking about Jannah. And you may think, what, what is this issue? You know, this is kind of like you know, a theoretical issue that doesn't really have much to do with these subjects that you've been talking about in the previous episodes. It has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with it because... Prophet ﷺ says that a person who has an ounce of pride in them will not enter into Jannah. See? See how important it is? We're not talking about you know, some theoretical issue or some social problem that we're facing. We're talking about Jannah and Hellfire. We're talking about a person, if they don't follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not thinking that they are better than another Muslim just because they are from such and such country or their skin tone is like such and such, these things that absolutely are contrary to Islam, then they will not be able to enter Jannah. They're not my words. These are the words of the beloved Prophet Muhammad And I'm here today, my dear brothers and sisters, to tell you as Muslim youth, we absolutely, absolutely cannot carry on this baggage. We have to be exactly 180 degrees opposite from what's happening and the realities of our community today. How do we do that? First thing to do that is to get to know your Muslim brothers and sisters. Whether, you know, see, especially if you're living in the West, Wallahi, we have such a great opportunity and such a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we actually get to see Muslims from all over the world. I used to live in Salt Lake City. And Salt Lake City is not a very diverse city. You know, the state of Utah is not very diverse. But then, what I would tell people is, if you want to see diversity in Utah, come to the masjid. I used to pray at a smaller masjid called Masjid al-Nur. Okay? Come to Masjid al-Nur, and you'll see diversity. And go, or go to any masjid in, in the state, and you'll see diversity. Because at the masjid, you see the biggest diversity. You see people come from all around the world saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And they pray next to each other. But you can be praying next to a brother from such and such country, and you are from such and such country. But after salah, if that same brother comes and asks for your daughter, will you say yes to him, or will you say no, based simply on the fact that he is from a different country, or from a different culture, or things that are absolutely against Islam? See, 
there's no problem, as we said, to be people who care for culture, to be people who, you know, are happy to be from such and such country or think it, love their own country. There's no problem with that. As long as it, you don't think that you're better than anyone else. As long as you don't think you're better than anyone else. As the Prophet Sallallahu says, the black person is not better than a white person. And a white person is not better than a black person. And an Arab is not superior to a non-Arab. And a non-Arab is not superior to an Arab. Except by one thing. By taqwa. Piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess what? No one knows if you're a pious person or not, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in reality, we cannot judge each other based on anything on this life. We cannot say that we are better than other people simply because you know we come from a different culture or we are coming from such and such background or we live in such and such social class. You never know. On the Day of Judgment, that person that you're looking down upon may be in a much, much, much better place than you are when he goes into Jannah, inshallah. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us get this great disease out of our hearts. And as Muslim youth, I'll be honest with you, we don't have that disease. Naturally, we don't have that disease. Let's not put it into our hearts. Let's not put it into our hearts. And if we have it, let's take it out. This disease of nationalism. This disease of racism within our own Muslim communities thinking that we are better than other people simply because we're from such and such country or from such and such background. This is absolute ignorance. Ignorance, honestly. People who are learned like us, people who've had high education like us, cannot fall into this trap. People who are practicing Muslims, people who are members of this new generation of Islam, cannot fall into this trap. We'll be back in a moment, inshallah. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, some practical pointers on how, if you have this disease inside of your heart of nationalism or racism, to take it out of your heart. And if you don't have it, to inshallah, try to not allow it to go into your heart. The first and most important way you can do that is within your Muslim community. If you're living in a place where you have diversity, don't let all your friends be you know, basically from one background or one culture. Get to know different people. And the best place to find different Muslims, you know, is from the masjid. Because this is the most diverse place. Try to get to know as many people as you can. And see, maybe you have something that you can share in common with them that you may not be able to, to think that you have right now. Inshallah, you will. Get to know more people. Even if they're not your closest friends, that's okay. But at least you, they're your friends. Go out with them. Get to know what they do. You know, make your basis of getting to be friends with someone Islam not anything else. Because believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, it is the only thing that lasts. It is the thing that we came to out of conviction. See, I don't have any control over my skin tone. I don't have any control over what country I came from originally. I don't have any control over this. So you should not judge me by this. You should judge me by the thing that I chose by myself. I chose whether to be a practicing Muslim or not to be a practicing Muslim. I chose whether to follow Islam or not to follow Islam. So if you're going to think that you're better than me or not be better than me simply because I'm from such and such country or if I'm going to think the same, subhanAllah. We are judging each other based on pointless things. And in reality, we should never judge each other. Because as we said, the only way that people are differentiated from each other is through their taqwa, their consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only one that knows that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khayran. I'll see you next time, inshaAllah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Together we can make it on the road to Jannah. You and me hand in hand on the road to Jannah. Together we can make it on the road to Jannah. You and me, hand in hand, on the road to Jannah. All my life I've had this dream where I can live in peace, knowing you and me are on the road, on the road, on the road, on the road, on the road.